Iran is ramping up uranium enrichment in response to what it says was Israeli sabotage at a nuclear facility. Tehran's chief nuclear negotiator Abbas Arakchi on Tuesday told state media the nation was adding centrifuges at the Natanz nuclear facility and would begin enriching fissile material up to 60% purity, a level above the 20% threshold seen as highly enriched and a large step towards weapons-grade uranium. We are going to add 1,000 more centrifuges uh, to, to Natanz facility. We would start from tomorrow enrichment up to 60 percent. Meeting with his Russian counterpart on Tuesday, Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif, hinted that Israel could face repercussions after an explosion on Sunday at the Natanz nuclear site. Well, the U.S. is reportedly planning to withdraw all American troops from Afghanistan by September 11th of this year. President Biden is due to announce the plans later on Wednesday. There are about 3,000 American soldiers in Afghanistan serving alongside some 7,000 additional NATO forces. Biden's plan extends the May 1st withdrawal deadline set by the Trump administration by four months. U.S. officials say that'll give Washington more time to coordinate an orderly withdrawal with NATO allies. But the Taliban has threatened to renew attacks if foreign forces are not out by May. Three people, including one policeman, killed in Pakistan, two in Lahore and one in Karachi, after protests erupted across the country. All this as the Lahore police arrested the Tehreek e Labaik Pakistan chief, Saad Rizvi, TLP is an Islamist anti-blasphemy party, party and its leader, Saad Rizvi, had called for the expulsion of the French ambassador. The protests have now spread far and wide across Pakistan and have even reached Muzaffarabad in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Over 50 arrests have been made since last evening. Several TLP members also have been arrested as demonstrations continued across major Pakistan cities of Karachi, Lahore and Rawalpindi. A police officer who shot a black man during a traffic stop in the U.S. city of Minneapolis has resigned. 26-year-old veteran Kim Potter had been on administrative leave after the shooting. The city's police chief says he believes she mistakenly reached for her handgun instead of her taser. 20-year-old Dante Wright had been shot while attempting to flee a traffic stop. He then crashed his vehicle and died from the gunshot wound. The incident has sparked two days of protests, just 16 kilometres from where George Floyd died last year. And beyond this, our where authorities on Tuesday have seized the giant cargo ship which had blocked Egypt's Swiss Canal for nearly about a week in the month of March. The Swiss Canal Authority is now claiming $916 million in terms of compensation for the lost revenue, damage to the canal, equipment and labor that was used to free up the ship and also the harm to the reputation that was suffered. The 200,000 ton ship ever given had gotten stuck diagonally in the narrow but the crucial global trade artery on the 23rd of March, triggering a mammoth six day long effort by the Egyptian personnel and international salvage specialists to dislodge it and to make it float again. Unfortunately, we are seeing the kinds of pictures that we did last year during the peak of the first wave of the coronavirus. Most recently, we have seen pictures of bodies outside the biggest government-run hospital in the city of Raipur, and Raipur's chief medical officer said this is because they don't have enough freezers to keep the bodies, that hospital's intensive care units and uh, oxygen-equipped beds have been at almost full capacity over the past week.
Raipur is in the state of Chhattisgarh, which is one of the worst affected at the moment. But these issues in Chhattisgarh are not unique to that state. We have reports of a shortage of medical facilities, of equipment in a number of places, most notably in the worst affected state, Maharashtra, where medical teams which were sent there also said that there is a lack of oxygen supply and even malfunctioning ventilators. Let's turn to France, where lawmakers have voted to ban many short-haul domestic flights. It is in a bid to reduce carbon emissions. The legislation will end routes where the same journey could be made by train in less than two and a half hours. The planned measures will face a further vote in the Senate before becoming law. Thanks to the pandemic, fewer people are taking to the skies. But the French government wants to see a reduction even when things get back to normal. It says it's committed to reducing carbon emissions and the airline industry is a big producer of CO2. Hence the vote to ban a number of domestic flights, although connecting flights won't be directly affected. Either way, some lawmakers remain to be convinced. South African post office is in crisis. Auditor General Sakani Maluleke says it's commercially insolvent. She says this is due to irregular and wasteful expenditure. Well, the Communication Workers Union has been in a pay dispute with the post office for more than a year now. The union wants its members who are employed on a temporary basis to be made permanent by the employer. Yeah, the first point is that uh, you can attribute all of this uh, to a number of issues. And indeed, this is not a surprise. I mean, Communication Workers Union, we have uh, last year already written to the board demanding that there should be a forensic audit on finances of SAPO, mm. uh, which at some stage the board approved that, but it never happened. Air safety investigators are now trying to work out what caused a light plane to crash, killing the pilot and his passenger. The aircraft plunged into a paddock northeast of Canberra late yesterday while surveying power lines for an electricity company. The Cessna 172 broken in a field at Sutton just outside the ACT. It had left Canberra at 1.30 yesterday afternoon to survey high voltage power lines for essential energy, crashing three hours later. Police believe the 31-year-old male pilot from country Victoria and his 18-year-old male passenger from Albury were killed on impact. The plane belonged to Oberon Aviation Services, a small family company based in Albury. The Pentagon has confirmed a strange and unexpected sight captured by Navy personnel off the coast of California. The video shows flying pyramid-shaped objects hovering above the USS Russell and another warship. It was leaked by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Uh, he's also shared three images from the USS Omaha showing an unknown spherical craft. The Pentagon has confirmed its Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, what a task force that is, <laughs> is examining the footage. What separates this footage compared to other UFO footage you might see is that the US Navy photographed and filmed these pyramid-shaped UFOs and transmedium vehicles. And I obtained, as a journalist, I obtained and released some of this historic footage with my mentor in journalism, George Knapp, and this has now, as you said, been directly confirmed by the Pentagon. 